we all enjoyed uh, Lucas's presentation. He's given you a lot of science, a lot of scientific studies on what's going on in the world of uh, heart disease. And I would like to just pick up on that and continue on what Lucas has given you already. So the idea that fat and cholesterol cause heart disease comes from 1952 from the diet heart hypothesis. This hypothesis has been called the greatest scientific deception of this century, perhaps of any century, by a renowned American doctor and scientist, George Mann, who passed away already, and by many other renowned scientists who really understood science, how it's conducted and how we should uh, analyze it. A hypothesis is not the truth. It's only an idea. It has to be proven. This hypothesis, since it was proposed, no other hypothesis in the world had so much research put into it. Billions have been spent all over the world to prove this hypothesis. Billions. And huge political and commercial machine has been built based on this hypothesis. To prove a hypothesis takes a long time. Science doesn't work fast. And while science was working on this hypothesis, the governments in the Western world have fully committed to it. The media tooted a new breakthrough that this is the truth. And all sorts of commercial uh, companies jumped on the bandwagon. Pharmaceutical industry is making billions on this hypothesis. Food industry is making billions. Medical industry is making billions. Western governments are making billions. Hypothesis, this hypothesis today, we can 100% say, has been proven wrong. The diet heart hypothesis is a big mistake. It has been proven wrong for the last 30 years. But because our political and commercial machine has committed to this hypothesis, they work very hard not to allow the population to know the truth, to know the, the, the real scientific truth that came out. As you already heard, 95%, maybe more, of studies in the Western world are funded by commercial companies. In English, we have a very good saying. You know, in Russia, we have another, which is very good. But it says that the one who pays the piper orders the tune. Right? And what is a scientific study? They design it, they collect data, and then the data is analyzed. If any of you studied statistics, how to analyze data, you would know that there are many methods to analyze the data, depending on what result you want to get out of it. Pharmaceutical industry, food industry, and other industries which benefit from this employ an army of statisticians to do just that for them. So all of these studies, 95, almost 100% studies on this subject, we cannot trust. They're full of lies. However, the honest science has been working on it. There are honest scientists in every country uh, around the world, and they have come up with the truth. So what did the honest science actually say? That dietary cholesterol and animal fats have nothing to do with heart disease. They do not cause heart disease. In fact, there is no, no connection. Low blood cholesterol is dangerous. Low blood cholesterol. We'll talk more about it. Not high blood cholesterol. People who eat the most fat and the most cholesterol have the lowest incidence of disease, all disease. The higher your cholesterol level in your blood, the healthier you are altogether. That's what science has demonstrated conclusively, that old people who have high levels of cholesterol have 100% here, no dementia, no Alzheimer's disease. They're healthy, they're sprightly, and they look after themselves, these people. High blood cholesterol does not cause heart disease or atherosclerosis. That is a fact. We've known this fact for the last 20 years. Yet the population is still being told the lies. People with higher cholesterol live the longest, 
and the healthiest lives. People who are in their 90s, 80s, and people who reach 100 usually have high blood cholesterol. And they eat eggs and bacon and butter for breakfast <laughs> on a daily basis, these people, almost you know, exclusively. Let's talk about low blood cholesterol. It increases risk of heart disease and stroke. That is a fact. If you have low blood cholesterol, you will have high risk of heart disease and strokes. That is an absolute fact. It is associated with cancer. People who have low blood cholesterol have it low for about 18 years before they're usually diagnosed with cancer. That is the, the number that's been given to us by science. It is associated with violence, aggression, and suicide. We'll talk more about the brain. But what you have to understand, the brain is a fatty organ. It's got a high fat content, the brain. About 40% of that fat is cholesterol. Your brain is made from cholesterol, 40% of it. The substance called myelin coats every nerve fiber and every nerve cell in your nervous system, in your brain, in your spine, in the peripheral nervous system. It's like an insulation around electric wires. You know that electricity, all electric wires have to be insulated? Our brain works on electricity. So that's the insulation. Myelin, more than 60% of it is cholesterol. The rest is saturated fat. That is what myelin is. So when you start reducing blood cholesterol levels, you're putting brain under grave danger. Because brain has cell regeneration processes going on all the time. Cells in the brain do die, and they get replaced by newly born cells. These processes are very active. And these new baby cells need building materials to be made from. They have to be made from cholesterol, saturated fats, proteins, glyconutrients, and some other things, but a large percent is fat and cholesterol. And if the blood cholesterol is low, the brain is not getting enough to maintain its structure and to function properly. People with low blood cholesterol have aggressive personalities and poor self-control. Carl Pfeiffer, a renowned American doctor who did research in American prisons, has discovered that more than 80% of violent offenders, people who committed murder and other violent crimes, had low blood cholesterol. More than 85%. Low blood cholesterol makes the brain starve, the brain cannot function well, the person becomes angry, these people are easily irritated, they easily attack, they easily become aggressive, and they are prone to violence and crime. It is associated with Parkinson's disease. Indeed, now we know that statins cause Parkinson's disease. We have an epidemic of Parkinson's disease. It's growing very rapidly. Without doubt, large percent of that epidemic is due to anti-cholesterol pills that people are taking. Because the brain is a fatty organ, it requires cholesterol. And if it doesn't get enough, it will manifest symptoms. It is associated with memory loss. In fact, memory loss is the number one side effect of um, starting drugs. The brain cannot function, you can't remember anything. Because in order to form memories in the brain, synapses have to be formed. The cells in the brain have long arms. They grow long arms to communicate with each other. And when the two arms of two cells come together, they have to do this. They have to create a synapse here and a synapse here, and they have to connect. Now, the synapses are almost exclusively made out of cholesterol and saturated fat. If your blood cholesterol is low, that is the only place your brain can get cholesterol from. It can manufacture some, but not enough. Then the brain can't form these synapses. So the cells cannot connect with each other. As a result, the person cannot create memories and it is the short-term memory that suffers. The person might remember what happened in the childhood, because those synapses were formed in the childhood, but he doesn't remember what he had for breakfast, and where he put his car keys, or where he left his hat, you know, or his shoes, 
or something else. The short-term memory is not being formed because the brain doesn't have enough building materials, resources to create memories. These people can't learn anything new because in order to learn something, we have to remember it. We can't form memory. We have an epidemic of Alzheimer's disease. Western governments are, are, are in absolute panic because it is a terrible epidemic and it's like an avalanche coming onto humanity. Alzheimer's disease, dementia. Vast percent of that epidemic is due to statins because every one of these people are taking these drugs. The brain is starving. It cannot form synapses. As a result, the person cannot learn anything, cannot remember anything, and develops Alzheimer's disease. It is associated with poor immunity because our immune cells are high fat cells. Large percent of the cell membrane and the membranes inside the cell, which form organelles, are made out of cholesterol and saturated fat. And immune cells live a very short life, only a few days, many of them. And when there is any infection in the body, there's a fight going on, many of them die. So the, your bone marrow has to work very hard to give birth to new baby cells, immune cells, because all your immune cells are born in the bone marrow. Bone marrow is a high cholesterol organ. It has a very high composition of cholesterol. And again, most of that cholesterol comes to your bone marrow from the blood. If you have a low level of cholesterol in your blood, your bone marrow is starving. It cannot manufacture immune cells, blood cells, and many other cells. As a result, you, start, you become prone to infections. Western governments are all running around with these hospital infections, MRSA. You've heard of that, haven't you? That hospital infections have become a big problem. Why? Because every patient in these hospitals, older than 40, is on statins. They have reduced their cholesterol level in the blood. They are unable to fight infections. In order to fight an infection, we need LDL cholesterol. That is a major, major part of any fight with any infection in the blood. Your immune system requires large amounts of LDL cholesterol. And what are they doing? They're giving them statins. LDL cholesterol is low. The person cannot fight any infection. They're completely defenseless, these patients. That is why we have hospital infections. That is a major, major cause of it. Learning disabilities in children and adults, without doubt. Mother's breast milk is very rich in cholesterol. It has a high content of cholesterol. More than that, it has an enzyme in it to make sure that the baby's digestive system absorbs 100% of that cholesterol. Not one molecule of it gets wasted when babies are breastfeeding. Why? Because the baby's brain and eyes and bone marrow and other high fat organs require large amounts of cholesterol to form themselves properly. Manufacturers of uh, formula feed for babies know this fact. But because of all the propaganda with cholesterol, they don't put any cholesterol in formulas. That is why it is a very high rate amongst formula-fed babies. They have a very high percentage of poor ability to learn, lower intelligence, problems with behavior, and glasses. They have poor eyesight because their eyes didn't form properly in these children. And infections as well, because bone marrow is not being, being properly formed. It is associated with early death. People with low blood cholesterol don't live long. They die early, usually from cancer or from an infection. People with low blood cholesterol have four times higher rate of AIDS than people with high blood cholesterol. That's a fact. People with low blood cholesterol suffer from infections three times more, and they die from infections much more often than people with normal and high level of cholesterol. We cannot fight infections without cholesterol. What does cholesterol do in the body? Let's have a look. Lucas has uh, covered this question quite well, but I will just add a few things. It is a vital part of every cell membrane. You know that cell membrane is a double layer of fats 
where the fat soluble ends inside of the membrane and the water soluble on the outside. It's an amazing, amazing structure. But within that uh, structure, there are many receptors because the cell has to communicate with everything else in the world. And these receptors are made out of lipoproteins and a large percent of those lipoproteins are cholesterol and saturated fat in those receptors. In some cells, depending on the function of the cell in the body, depending on where this cell is in the body, some of them have 70% cholesterol in their cell membrane, some have 30. So there's a range between 30 and 70% of cholesterol in the cell membranes in the body. Every cell, about 70% of every cell are membranes. So you can do the calculations yourself. What percent of your body is actually cholesterol and saturated fat? It is more than 50%. You are made from cholesterol. It is a structural element of every cell in your body. And you are made from saturated fats. This is a structural element. And because the cells in the body constantly die and get replaced by newly born cells, building materials are required to build those new baby cells from, to give birth to them. So our bodies require large amounts of cholesterol all the time for that process and saturated fats as well. From cholesterol, all our steroid hormones made in the body. Adrenal hormones. Our adrenals are responsible for handling stress. Every time we're under stress, every time you're working hard or something happened, or you're sitting in the traffic jam and you're late for work, you know, you're stressed. Your blood will be full of cortisol, adrenaline, and other steroid hormones. They're made from cholesterol. So every time you're under stress, adrenals shout to the liver because the blood cholesterol is maintained by our liver. The liver has a factory inside it which manufacture cholesterol. So every time we're under stress, adrenals shout to the liver, I need cholesterol, I need saturated fat. The liver gets the signal and it switches on that factory, works hard, produces all that cholesterol, puts it in the blood to send it to adrenals. In order to travel in a water-based blood, Cholesterol has to be packaged because it is a fat-soluble substance. It can't go naked into your blood. So the liver covers it, puts it in a shuttle called LDL. LDL carries cholesterol from the liver to your adrenals. Once they arrive there in the adrenals, adrenals will unpackage them and convert them into cortisol, glucocorticoids, adrenaline, and other steroid hormones, so you can handle stress. There are people in whom this factory in the liver is broken because they are too toxic or they have nutritional deficiencies. And these are GAPS people. Many, many GAPS people have low blood cholesterol because they are too toxic and this machine is broken in the liver. These people cannot handle stress. They have nervous breakdowns. They start crying and weeping and inconsolable. Children, adults, these people, they fly off the hand, or they become aggressive, or they attack. And that is a part of any mental illness. Because the adrenals cannot manufacture hormones, and they cannot handle stress, these people. From cholesterol, myelin is made. We talked about it in the nervous system. When we start losing myelin, we develop multiple sclerosis. That is a major disease of loss of myelin. But all other neurological disorders have loss of myelin and all mental disorders. When I examine uh, schizophrenics, when I examine autistic children, they have symptoms, neurological symptoms of multiple sclerosis. So their myelin is being destroyed. In order to rebuild myelin, we need cholesterol, we need fats. And in many of these patients, the factory in the liver is broken, doesn't work, they have low blood cholesterol. What can we do in this situation? We need to eat lots of cholesterol, lots of saturated fat, to give the body a hand, to allow the body to deal with that situation. In my experience, in order to heal people with multiple sclerosis, they must have at least six eggs a day. Lots of butter, lamb fat, beef fat, goose fat, duck fat. The fattiest bits, that is their food. Only then they recover. 
these people because they need to rebuild their myelin. It is essential for memory and learning. From cholesterol, vitamin D is made. When we are sunbathing, your blood cholesterol will be high because the liver is manufacturing it quickly, putting it into packaging it to LDL, putting it into the blood, and the blood delivers it to your skin. And there in the skin, the sunlight converts it into vitamin D. Vitamin D is really a hormone because it has an effect on every organ, every function in the body. It's an absolutely amazing substance. We cannot live without it. And because we human beings evolved on this planet, being naked most of our existence and living outdoors. Only recently we started covering ourselves with clothes and sitting indoors all the time and hiding from the sun. So Mother Nature within the evolution decided that we get enough vitamin D from the sunlight. So she didn't put a lot of vitamin D into food. In order to get a daily amount of vitamin D for an adult in our modern world, we need to eat 20 egg yolks and a kilogram of butter daily. It's a large amount. Or we should eat brain of the animals. The brains of the animals are the richest source of vitamin D and the richest source of cholesterol. Just like our own brains, they have a very high level of cholesterol and a lot of vitamin D in there. So when we are sunbathing, your blood cholesterol is high. When we're under stress, your blood cholesterol is high. When we have any wound, any scratch, any wound, any trauma in the body, your blood cholesterol will be high. Why? Because no healing in the body can happen without involvement of cholesterol. In order to heal any wound, we need to give birth to baby cells, to heal the damaged tissue, because the damaged tissue, all those damaged cells will be discarded. You can't heal them, you just throw them away. New cells have to be born. In order for them to be born, membranes need to be formed. And those membranes are largely cholesterol and saturated fat. So every time you had surgery, every time you went to a dentist, every time you hurt yourself, your blood cholesterol will be high because your liver is working hard to manufacture this healing substance. It puts it in the blood, and the blood delivers it to the place that is hurt, to the place that needs healing. After cholesterol has done its, its, its jobs in that place, it's taken back to the liver to be recycled. And the shuttle that does that is called HDL, high-density lipoprotein. Our clever science, in its wisdom, called the LDL the bad cholesterol, the HDL the good cholesterol. It's the same as to say that the ambulance, which goes from the base to the patient, is the good ambulance, and the one that takes the, uh, goes from the patient back to the base is the, the bad ambulance. It's that, that, that kind of analogy, or vice versa. That cholesterol just travels back to the liver to be recycled, and the other cholesterol goes to the place to be used. So they cannot be good or bad. And indeed, our science recently has discovered that indeed that is the fact, but they found little percent of LDL cholesterol, which they still say is bad. So now we doctors are told to call that part the good bad cholesterol, the rest of it we have to call the bad bad cholesterol. That's how silly and confusing all of this is. It is essential for immunity, cholesterol, we talked about it, and bile salts are made from cholesterol. Without bile we cannot digest fats, we cannot absorb fats, and we cannot absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, and vitamin E. Without these four vitamins, there is no life. We cannot live without these vitamins. Many people, particularly GAPS people, have lots of bile stones blocking their biliary ducts, so the bile doesn't flow. These are the people who can't digest fats. Their skin becomes dry, their hair becomes dry, and they develop learning problems, memory problems, because they can't digest fats in their food. As a result, fats are not absorbed, and usually these people are constipated because the fat, which is not digested, combines with salts in the bowel and forms a, a form of soap, very sticky, sticky soap. 
and the person becomes constipated. That is a major, major cause of constipation in people. So bile is absolutely essential for us to digest fats and to absorb fats. And bile is extremely rich in cholesterol. When the bile reaches ileum, the last part of the intestine, most of the bile salts are reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and returned to the liver. Most of that cholesterol is reabsorbed. Just that fact should have given us a clue just how important cholesterol is for the human body, that it carefully reabsorbs it and carefully recycles it, reuses it. People with high cholesterol live longer. Older people need more cholesterol. So what I would like to say here that whatever your cholesterol is in your blood, that is your right cholesterol. Do not interfere with it. In fact, I recommend to people never test your blood cholesterol. If your doctor suggests you, well, let's test your blood cholesterol, say, no, thank you. Whatever it is, that's good for me. Because if you do allow the doctor to test your blood cholesterol, then there will be pressure to put you on statins, pressure to do more testing, and there will be fear-mongering, scare-mongering. Our doctors are trained to do that very well. They've done such a good job that majority of the population believes that if they don't take statins, they will die from heart attack, definitely. They actually believe that. I know many people who believe that, which is an absolute lie. It is not true at all. Which foods are rich in cholesterol? 